Okay, so Jeremy's the director of publications at the Radiological Society of North America, and he oversees editorial production and business development of all journal-related products. Prior to joining the RSNA, he served new, in numerous publishing roles at the American Medical Association, most recently as a journal sales manager for the Asia-Pacific region. And he's the co-chair of the SSP Marketing Committee. And he's also our professional development liaison as well. So he's very active with SSP. So, Jeremy, thank you. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, thank you all for allowing me the opportunity, opportunity to talk to you for a few minutes about, um, as soon as I can figure this out, the decision. So um, should RSNA start a new journal? So what I'm going to talk about for the next couple of minutes is just um, the process uh, that we've gone through to get to the point to make a decision to start uh, a new journal. So I should clarify that we have not made a decision yet, but I wanted to talk about you know everything and all the work that's gone into just getting to that point and what's all involved and what we've had to think about and consider and some of the challenges and roadblocks we've faced along the way doing that. So I think this is more, um, this will probably be a little bit more narrowly focused and we'll get into some of the broader topics as the other speakers um, get up here and speak as well. But, you know, this kind of reminds me, all this build up to whether or not we're going to start a new journal kind of reminds me of another big decision, which is LeBron James in 2010, who was, you know, had this highly anticipated um, uh, news conference nationally televised to make a decision to leave um, the Cleveland Cavaliers and go play basketball for the Miami Heat. And I'm sure there's a lesson about coming full circle for basketball fans that know that he's now back in Cleveland. But um, so this chair where LeBron is sitting right now, that's where we're, we're going to get to probably within the next month to actually make a decision to launch a new journal. So, um, you know, for us, we are the Radiological Society of North America, but we have a, um, a pretty substantial international membership base as well, um, something that we're looking to cater to a little bit more and pay more attention to um, and, and grow in different aspects as needed. Um, we also publish two uh, medical journals, a clinical um, scientific uh, journal Radiology, which is um, you know very well known in the field. Um, also, an educational journal uh, called Radiographics, which um, you know has recently just uh, awarded its one millionth CME credit, which we're kind of proud of because it's more educational impact factors, more for the clinical one. So we're happy about that. So how did we get here to even start about launching and talking about launching a new journal? I know, I mean, this is not a, a revolutionary topic for a lot of publishers, especially society publishers. There's a lot of conversations um, going on and there's a lot of publishers that are ahead of us in this that have launched new titles. Um, but for us, there's a, you know, and that's, so that's understanding that there's a lot of different reasons to launch a new journal. For us, really, the first three bullet points were really the key ones. Um, we've just seen an increasing number of submissions to our um, flagship journal, Radiology, over the past few years. Um, overall, for RSNA, we've seen a shift to um, more subspecialty content consumption. Um, in terms of what's happened in our annual meeting and how people are consuming content in our annual meeting um, to our educational resources. Um, so we're looking, you know, to see if there's ways that we can address that. And once we started, you know, conceptually talking about a new journal, the, the fact that um, we could have more appeal to our international authorship base was something that really um, we kind of grabbed a hold of and, and wanted to see what we could do with. Um, I've, I've talked to other um, publishers in, um, about reasons why they've started new journals, and they've you know provided different answers, but a couple of you know ones that really stuck out with me are you know could come from a top-down leadership vision from a board or an advisory council or something, um, a space that that field is really looking to get into, or uh, maybe a demand in the marketplace for more content. Can can a new journal fit either one of these needs? And I think the answer is yes. Um, so the steps that we've taken to to really um, get to a point to make a decision it's it's i should say it's been a pretty long process it's taken about a couple of years and that's we for us when we took this on we kind of went all in we looked at everything we could possibly get our hands on in terms of data that we had um, and then we solicited data from the outside for, through surveys and interviews but we got as much usage uh, information that we could get we looked at past um, surveys from Surveys, reader surveys that we've conducted in the past five or ten years, uh, conducted stakeholder interviews. Um, we had our editorial office in Boston, um, 
actually conducted a really interesting, what they called a reject resubmit analysis, where they started looking at papers where they um, turned away or they rejected with an opportunity to resubmit. And if those papers ended up in other um, publications, where did they end up? What was the citation? Um, just to kind of gauge like the level of papers that were being rejected, they're still quality papers. You know, they just weren't able to to be you know consumed in the radiology product, which is really helpful in making a decision like should we launch a new journal. Um, of course, um, we engaged the help of a consultant to help us with a, uh, managing a lot of this data, including financial projections, uh, competitor analysis. Um, surveys, like I said, we fielded a survey towards the very end of this whole process, um, which was which was really helpful. Um, and then we started to take looking at the next levels. What would it actually take for us as an organization with our current staffing editorial structure to actually do something like this? Uh, what resources would would we need? Um, and of course, along the way, the best that we could, just held status meetings with uh, state various stakeholders and went back to more financial projections when accounting got involved and they wanted to see different things. So it could go on and on, but those are, those are like the real, the, the major steps that we really um, kind of went all in and embraced uh, in this whole process. So challenges along the way, you know, we've had, um, I think this can really be viewed as a challenge, but in a way it's also a bit of an opportunity. Um, but when we, I didn't even mention that when we went in to look into whether or not we should start a new journal, basically we knew it was going to be online only and that was about it. But this is something that we're going to look at. So um, it wasn't like we're saying we're going to do an obstetric imaging journal and it's going to be open access and okay, we could really narrow in on that. So we were really working in the broad scope. So we had to look at all different types of scenarios, all different types of business models, um, potential, you know, off of different ways of um, peer review through the cascading. Um, is it, everything going to be cascaded from radiology? Is it, will we accept direct submissions? Um, are we going to charge members for it? Just every, everything you could think of, we kind of had to at least keep in mind in some way or another. Um, obviously, we've all gone through projects where we've had different data sources and looked, you know, closely at all, all the data. And then the more you look at it and the more sources you have, the more confusing it can get sometimes. Um, we really you know, wanted to focus on differentiation too with this new product. So you know, we, for example, we referenced, um, I mentioned older like author surveys where there's a lot of information about the manuscript submission process, but we had sw since switched the manuscript submission process um, to a new vendor. So the feedback that we had on that, we just had to keep in mind that it may not be useful um, for us now. Um, same with usage information as well. We had also gone through a platform conversion, so the usage uh, reporting that we had on our previous provider, we had to at least make sure it was normalized uh, as much as we could with our current usage information so we could really get a, get a good idea of like what everybody is interested in, what are the high, highly used topics, types of articles, those types of things. Um, I know Victoria mentioned, um, you know, stakeholders and managing expectations. I mean, for a society that has a board and advisory council, um, we have, you know, I mentioned we have consultants involved, we have staff, we have management. Um, it, it's a lot of people have a lot of opinions on what we should do and how we should do it. And there's some people that perhaps we wanted to get more input from. And so it's how to, how to balance all of that. Um, as this process went on for us, the word kind of got out a little bit and we received letter, uh, a letter from another organization saying, hey, we hear you're looking at uh, starting a new journal. We would be interested in maybe doing something with you with this. And so we had to take that into consideration now because again, everything was, was still quite open. So um, it's, it's managing all of this input, which is still valuable and useful against some of the data that you really want to, to look at to you know, get to a, a good point to make a recommendation. Um, so through all of this, uh, of course, you know, the, main, the main goal here is to come up with a product that um, is on the right topic and, and it's going to fulfill the right need for the society, for the medical community. Um, and so really all the research that we did, it was, it, it was a lot, and all of the work that we did looking at the re research really helped. Um, we fielded a survey, uh, like I mentioned, towards the end of this whole process, um, basically late last year. And the response from the survey really kind of supported, at least in terms of the topic areas, if we were going to do a topic-focused journal, not like a general cascading, um, you know, the four topic areas that we had kind of identified through the research, the surveys really supported that. So that, that was really helpful for us. Um, and, you know, just about the, the, topic, the subspecialty areas, too, the specific topic areas, 
Um, you know, we also had to make sure that we would have enough content for those areas. So even if you know one area bubbled up to the top, we had to go back and see: do, are there enough submissions? Will we have enough to sustain this journal? Excuse me, over you know the next um, you know couple of years until we might be able to absorb some some more direct submissions. Um, so obviously there's some risk. We had to keep all the risks in mind and we'll make sure that the people that are you know, ultimately making the decision are aware of the risks, and I, and I think they are now since we've been talking about this for quite a long time. But um, we have to keep in mind the, the impact on our, our current brands for RSNA and for radiology, uh, the journal, and for radiographics as well. Um, how is this going to be? We are a very big member organization. How is it going to be perceived by the members? Um, you know the the both the impact on the impact factor is is that's something to consider as well if we start cascading a lot is that going to have an impact on the impact factor um will we be able to sustain a journal like i mentioned um in the the two or three years that it'll take to maybe get an impact factor once we launch something um finding the right subject area like i touched on how is it going to be different speed to publication is something that we've heard a lot if you can make it faster we've you know in other panels that's mentioned uh, been mentioned before and um i recently just had a reviewer for t because it's something that we had in mind and we're you know every i think a lot of publishers struggle struggle with reviewer fatigue but um, can just imagine adding the impact of, of adding another journal and maybe even targeting those particular reviewers, putting more on their plate. Um, how, was that gonna, how was that gonna have an effect on what you do? So um, the overall lessons learned from this process, just to share, I mean, this is nothing revolutionary here. It's kind of basic, especially when you're working in a society um, from that perspective. But it's really helpful to get buy-in from the beginning from everybody that this is what we're doing. Um, and communicate the status along the way. Like I said, this was a couple year type of process. So we have a, a large annual meeting as well every year. And so sometimes sometimes things just kind of get brushed off to the side a little bit and then come March or something, say, hey, I need a report on usage for, oh, we're doing the new journals. Did we, did we vote on it? We decide on it? No, yeah, we're still working on it. And so the more you can keep everybody you know, in the loop that it's still going and what's going on is always helpful. Um, you know, be prepared to change course as well. I think we, we were going down a, a really good path of, um, a topic subscription based model and um, at one point it got to the board and they said that's great but we want to see what open access can do for us too so that's why that first challenge of looking at everything was really kind of an opportunity because we had done some of the work on that so we just had to dust off a little bit and then we could pick that back up again and really um, put some material together for them to consider as well so managing expectations of course is always um, a challenge but something important to do and you know, like I mean, this is just our experience here. It, it's taken a little while. Um, some people might not think it's taken that long at all. I'd be interested to hear other people have started journals, how long they've really spent on doing something like this. But if it's something that you're considering, maybe, you know, might be worth it to just start gathering some of the materials now and, and seeing what you have available and what you might need so you can, uh, so um, when the time comes, you'd be a little bit better prepared to move a little quicker. So.